Welcome to the InDesign Secrets video podcast, episode three, Power Zoom and Rotate Spread View. Mm -hmm. I'm Anne-Marie Concepcion, and I'm here along with my co-host, David Blattner. Hi, Anne-Marie. Hey, David. How are you? I am well, and hello to all of you out in videocast land. This is an <laughs> exciting day, videocast number three, and we uh -huh. wanted to let you know that this videocast is sponsored by our friends at Adobe Systems. The yes. fine makers of the fine software called Fine CS4. And right. CS4, Especially InDesign CS4. InDesign CS4 is, mm -hmm. uh, is, is awesome. And we want to talk about some of the cool features in InDesign CS4. And today we're going to focus primarily on Power Zoom and the Rotate Spread View features, which I love. Right, and I think they're two of the more subtle new features in CS4. They are. You know, they're a little hard to find, so that's one of the reasons why we want to focus on both of these. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Power Zoom first. Yeah. Um, the Zoom tool, we're not talking about the Zoom tool. Kind of weird, the Power Zoom has absolutely nothing to do with the actual Zoom tool. The Power Zoom tool is actually a mode of what's called the patient user mode thing, something mm -hmm. like that. Basically, it's every now and again, InDesign will change its behavior depending on whether you're moving quickly or pausing for a moment. And you've seen that before. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and zoom in on this uh, image over here. I'm mm -hmm. going to select this with the selection tool and zoom into 200% with a command 2 or control 2 on Windows. And if I double click on it, I switch to the direct select mode and click one more time and I've got the direct selection tool s selecting the image inside. And if I click and just move it around, it's just going to move quickly and I won't be able to see anything. But if I click and hold for a moment like I just did, I'm holding the mouse button down, it goes mm -hmm. into patient uh, mode view, patient user mode. I've been patient, and so I can actually see what's going on uh, behind the scenes. I'm sort of, I'm seeing what's going to get crossed out. You're seeing out. a live preview. It's a live preview. I like that. Good, right. good phrase. Live preview. Okay. So when I let go of the mouse button, I can now it's actually cropped in there. So mm -hmm. the patient user mode is a way to get a little bit more accurate view of your screen or a little bit more helpful uh, view of your screen. Uh, let me undo that. Command Z or Control Z on Windows. And I'm going to now use the same kind of mode, the patient user mode, uh, with a different tool, not the selection tool, but with the grabber hand tool. Right. And of course, let's, let's, let's zoom out to fit the entire document, like how we started with. Because I think then people mode. get a better appreciation Command for this. Command zero now, or control zero on Windows right. zooms out to fit the page. Or if you add the option or alt key, command option uh, zero or control alt zero will mm -hmm. fit the entire spread. In this case, now the just, page uh, is the spread. Now just in case you're wondering like what it is you're looking at, you're looking at the front and back of a uh, brochure that's meant to be folded multiple times. So you're mm -hmm. seeing the inside and the outside. And of course we're in preview mode. That's why you're seeing the gray background. But let's say that we are toward the end of the project and we want to zoom in on a couple of these placed uh, magazine covers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to make sure that uh, we're not going to have any white gaps, for example, between the frame boundary um, and, the, and the artwork inside. So you could use the zoom tool and zoom in to closely to one and then sort of just scroll the window around looking, searching for the other uh, miniature magazine covers on here, but yeah, instead, well, let's go ahead and show them how. Show them what you would do. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and zoom in on a piece of this. The zoom okay. tool you can get with the command spacebar or the control spacebar gives you the zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom in on a piece of it, kind of spot checking this. Spot check that image right. here. Now I want to spot check a different image. Now instead of having to zoom back and then zoom in again, zoom back and zoom in again with multiple clicks and, and strokes, I could use the navigator panel. Oh, I can't use the navigator no. panel because wah, 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 wah. <laughs> because Adobe took the navigator panel out of uh, out of InDesign CS4. Yeah, they're and trying to save some money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Actually, I I didn't mind that at all because I found the navigator panel really. Um, frustrating to use, and one of the most frustrating things about the Navigator panel is it actually slowed down the, uh, the performance in, in many cases. Uh, if, you, if you left that open, right. it, took up, it took up screen real estate, which is always at a premium, and the second thing is it kind of slowed things down. So they took it out, they just ripped it out, and they said, let's replace it with something even cooler. Let's replace it with this power zoom thing. So that's what we need to show you right here. The yes. power zoom, which you need the grabber hand. Right now I've got the uh, selection tool selected. So I could get the grabber hand either by pressing H or even faster, mm -hmm. option spacebar or alt spacebar will give me the grabber right. hand temporarily. And also then... known as Mr. Spanky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Spanky. 
Anne Marie's right. favorite term, Mr. Spanky. Now I can, while I have the grabber hand, I can either click and move, which just does the grabber hand the way you normally would get the grabber hand, mm-hmm. right? Or right. to pan, to pan the uh, to pan. document around within the window. Right. That's for scrolling or panning around right. the window. Or I'm going to use the patient user mode, which mm-hmm. changes the behavior. Option, spacebar, or alt, spacebar, and then click and hold for a moment, and you'll see we suddenly zoom out. That's the power zoom mode. Now, what's cool about that is I can move my cursor around, and you see I'm mm-hmm. actually moving the, uh, this, this big, big red rectangle. Right. And whatever I center on with that rectangle, when I let go, it'll take me right in on that when I let go of the mouse button. And it takes me back to exactly the same view percentage, in this case, 231%. Mm-hmm. So. You know, it's kind of funny because I use it kind of the opposite of what you just showed there, David. Let me show. If I press the keyboard yeah. shortcut to fit everything in the window, right. what I usually do is I'm looking at it way zoomed out. And then when I want to use the power zoom, uh-huh. I'll press the same keyboard shortcut and press and hold. Mm-hmm. And then I get this big square. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And then I use my arrow keys or the scroll bar or the scroll wheel on my mouse to reduce the size of this. And uh, then right. I can drag that around and say I want to zoom in here. Yep. And then it zooms in that way. And then I do I, I press uh, option or alt space bar again and the mouse button. And then I'll drag that to another thing. And uh, let me check, you know, with the same zoom percentage, check something else. So I can quickly go through the document and zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. And uh, you started zoomed in and then you use power zoom to zoom out. I usually start zoomed out and then use power zoom to zoom in. But either see, way, yeah, either, either way. way works great. And but the the key is uh, you you gave an Im- incredibly important tip there, and you kind of just mm-hmm. brush past it quickly, which is the the scroll wheel or the arrow keys. That ability when you're in power zoom mode, let me zoom out here. The ability to come over here and then press the arrow keys to make this bigger or smaller. That is right. incredibly useful, and that's mm-hmm. really the key to using power zoom, whether you start zoomed out or zoomed in. But either way, you right. want to you want to really center that uh, to to fine tune exactly what you want to be looking at. Um, I like to think of the power zoom tool as like a like a, a jeweler's loop, you know, or or mm-hmm. a loop that we'd used in the in the good old days with uh, mm-hmm. looking at that film. Uh, it's like the kind of thing that where you're zoomed in here, you're doing fine-tuned work with, with you know, you're really coming in here and tweaking something uh, on your page, and then you want to get a big view of it to work on something else. So I'm working here, zoomed in, and then I use the, the power zoom mode, come over here, and then let go, and I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm zoomed in again. So then I can do that's some right. more fine-tuning work. So that's and I think uh, for people who are uh, just getting used to CS4, mm-hmm. like I'm, gonna, I'm going to press... Um, Command plus to, or control plus to just get into a normal view. And let's say that you're working with some, you're just looking at some object. And if you switch to the hand tool or Mr. Spanky, or you press option or alt space bar because you want to pan the screen around, mm-hmm. um, if you keep the mouse button down while you're thinking about which way you want to go, oh, you know, this <laughs> might surprise you. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there's uh, – unfortunately, there's no way to change the amount of time that it takes. You know, there would be nice preference to say – to actually to turn this off because some people like this turned off uh, unless they added yet another modifier key because it uh, kind of freaks people out. But uh, if you are if you are a big fan of using that hand tool to actually pan the document around within the window, just make sure not to um, – not to hold down the mouse button without moving a little bit first. It's kind of like, you know, dribbling in basketball. You've got to keep moving. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. If you're going to use the grabber hand with those – if you're uh-huh. going to use the grabber hand, make sure you um, click and move even just a pixel, even just a tiny bit. Right. That will turn off the patient user mode. You only yeah. get the power zoom when you click and hold and don't move the cursor uh, for a little while. That's a really good point. Um, okay. So let's go on to our other feature, unless you had something else to say no, about power zoom. Go ahead. That's right. Okay. So um, in this document, I'm going to go back out to uh, fit everything in one window. Mm -hmm. You can see that we have a couple rotated panels. This is the uh, business reply card. And let's say that I'm working on this panel down here. I'm going to press um, Control or Command Plus, and I want to edit this text. Now, obviously, this frame has been rotated 90 degrees. You can see it up here in the Control panel. And if I double-click, it switches to my Type tool, and then my cursor rotates 90 degrees. And if I want to edit this text, you know, I'm going to get a crick in my neck. Because actually right now, if you could see me, I am leaning to the left to see what this is saying. 
And if you're trying to figure out like tabs and, and negative indents yeah. and trying to figure that out in your mind by rotated 90 degrees or if it's 180 degrees, which yeah, way is left or right, right. <laughs> it's, it's a mind bender. Yeah, so is. what I would normally do in CS3 would be I would take a copy of this, stick it on the pasteboard, rotate it so that it's in the correct orientation that you know to my head, mm-hmm. do my editing, and then re-rotate it and put it back. Oh, come which on. Is no, kind of a pain. It, there's a much easier way to do that. In C- much, even in CS3, you just pick up your, right. your, your computer monitor and you turn it sideways on, your, <laughs> on its stand. Or if you've got a laptop, it's really easy. Just turn your laptop and, and uh, kind of balance it on its side. And that works great. Yeah, okay. That's <laughs> enough of that. And uh, there is the, this feature in CS4 called Rotate Spread View. Right. All right. And the you can get it either from the view menu or from the pages panel menu. Can't do it right on the page. So from the view menu, mm-hmm. it's actually called rotate spread, which is misleading because it doesn't really rotate the spread. It just rotates your view of the spread. But yeah. if I said go ahead and rotate this guy by 90 degrees clockwise, there we go. So now the entire spread has been rotated 90 degrees. And I'm scrolling down and scrolling back up. And notice that... Um, here now my cursor is pointing the right way and I can easily do my edits without having to copy and paste this frame onto the pasteboard. Check out the pages panel. So this spread has is rotated but it doesn't look rotated in the pages panel and this is your guide to remind you that this is not going to be rotated when you print or when you export the PDF. Right. All right? It's only the view that's rotated and you do see this tiny little icon to the far right of it um, that looks like quote marks and that means that the, currently this view, uh, the, the view of this spread is being rotated. Right. It, yeah, it's a really right? important point. It's just what you see on screen that's being yeah. rotated. It's basically tricking uh, InDesign into, into showing it to you sideways, even though it's not really sideways. That's right. Now, I've zoomed out to fit the spread in the window to show you this other side effect of rotating a spread view is that you get this huge amount of pasteboard area. Huge, huge pasteboard. Which is <laughs> <laughs> I wish they didn't strange. do this. Yeah, it is. I, it's yeah. kind of frustrating, but... Um, you just kind of deal with it. And, you yeah, know. you just deal with it. Although, you know, uh, the thing is, is yes. if you hand this off to somebody else and they see that mm-hmm. huge pasteboard or if they see a sideways page and they're freaking out, uh, mm-hmm. they, they just might just throw the, the document back at you saying, you know, this thing's corrupted <laughs> or I don't know, I can't deal with this. I don't know what's I'll going on here. Tell them to watch the video cast episode so That's they know right. what's going on. Good point. And by the way, for you, for you InCopy users out there, this is, this is honored by InCopy CS4. Now, InCopy CS4 doesn't have a rotate spread view. They don't even have a pages panel. But if the InDesign user rotates a spread or two and then saves the InDesign document or the assignment, then the InCopy user that opens it up will see the rotated view. That can is go cool. ahead and edit these text frames. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. That is cool. But, but I do want to point out, though, yes. that, that if you, you know, be, we have to tell people how to turn this off. Again, if, you know, if, if somebody yeah. else is freaking out or if your printer's freaking out or whatever, mm-hmm. it's a good idea to reset all of this uh, before you hand it off to someone. And so you that's can right. get back to that same... Uh, uh, that same pop-up menu right here in the Pages mm-hmm. panel just by right-clicking or control-clicking with one button mouse, choosing mm-hmm. Rotate Spread View, and then choosing Clear Rotation. Right? So, right. I mean, you and you can assign keyboard shortcuts to all these commands that you see here in this menu, by the way. So. You can. You can, although mm-hmm. they, they kind of hit it. Let's go ahead and clear that rotation. Uh, yeah. If you're going to be doing that a lot, uh, they kind of hid that in the keyboard shortcuts dialog box. It's in the product area called Panel uh, the, 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 the panel menus. Panel so, menu. Because it is in the pages panel menu. It is. That's right. That's the, that's yeah. the third place where you find it. It's so Rotate that's where you're going to find it in the product area called pages panel menu. So, okay. I mean, oh, the panel menus. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I love that. It's so much more efficient. And, you know, the whole point of why we're doing these video casts is to get you more efficient, get you more productive. Mm-hmm. And CS4 has all of these little, you know, hidden little uh, secret features like this power zoom right. and, and the uh, rotate uh, spread view that make you more efficient because anytime you you are uh, causing a crick in your neck, you're not going to be efficient, right? I mean, that's, that's an obvious one. Uh, but anytime you're doing the same thing over and over again, like zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out, the more efficient you can make yourself uh, with those kinds of tasks, the things you do a hundred or a thousand times a day, that's the right. more efficient you're going to be throughout your entire production. Hey, you know what's telling to me about these kind of features, David, is that um, they become so intuitive and so natural to use in CS4 that I find myself trying to do them in other programs. <laughs> you know, like I'm waiting uh-huh. for the power zoom to go into effect, or I'm like, why can't I rotate this view? You know, yeah. right? Why can't I? Right. So when when you find yourself wondering why, like, why isn't this built into the OS? Then you know it's something that's definitely helping you become more efficient and uh, uh, making your 
workflow a lot more streamlined. Yeah, yeah. It really All is. All right. Okay. Well, that is it for episode number three. Be sure to check out the show notes uh, on our blog at InDesignSecrets.com. And we'd love to hear what you thought about the show. Go ahead and mm-hmm. leave a comment there on the show notes. Or you can email us at info at InDesignSecrets.com. And until we meet again, this is David Blattner. And Anne-Marie Concepcion for InDesign Secrets. <laughs>